Thank you to Toshiba for inviting me. And we have to talk on advanced diagnosis of prostate cancer and scrotal lesions. Starting with a short introduction, I will briefly outline the possible indications for the use of multi-parametric MRI in terms of prostate cancer staging. We have to talk on MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy in combination with state-of-the-art ultrasound techniques. And we have to talk on contrast-enhanced ultrasound in combination with SMI for scrotal lesions. Starting with this first experiment, that's my first question to the audience. How can we check how long an egg was boiled? Five or ten minutes. First, please have a look on your left. That's an X-ray examination. An X-ray is very perfect to see is this an old or a fresh egg. Because if you have a lot of air inclusion, that means that's not good for you. That's an old egg. Move on to CT. We are beautiful to see the um, structure here. This is an impression fracture. CT is a good modality to show us these impression fractures. Move on to MRI. We can separate a raw cooked uh, egg from the boiled eggs, but it's very difficult to analyze the five or 10 minutes egg. Move on to your right. Ultrasound, of course, is the best modality to check this. If you use elastography, this is the stiff egg, 10 minutes. This is the soft egg, five minutes. This is the fra fracture reconstructed based on ultrasound. And you see, of course, ultrasound is uh, very nice to see also this very beautiful impression fracture in the egg. This is the soft core reconstructed based on 3D evaluation. Based on ultrasound, looks like a human eye. And we have to be very careful with the fractures like in CT or ultrasound. And once again, ultrasound, in my opinion, is the best modality because we can do all these things real time. What can we learn from this experiment? So first we have to talk on prostate. And if you look at the BMOD scan on this image, it's very difficult to separate the tumor, in my opinion. We know from the literature since the last three years, we can analyze this based on MRI very well, especially in combination, in combination of T2-weighted MRI and ADC value, where we see the tumor area very clearly in the central zone. That's the contrast-enhanced uh, MRI scan. But if we analyzed the prostate very carefully with power Doppler, we see a hypervascularization on the right side. We see a clear artifact based on tissue Doppler imaging. And of course, you can use contrast agents too in ultrasound. And the next step is to do all these things together in the fusion biopsy setting. And of course, we have to correlate all these findings with the histological analyzers, like in that example. Multi-parametric MRI, once again, it's very good, and I will demonstrate the background of this story. According to the guidelines of the European Association of Urology, patients with increasing PSA levels or suspicious findings uh, in the digital rectal examination after negative prostate biopsy undergo a repeat biopsy. That, that's very horrible for the men, and of course we all know that we have a very, very low cancer detection rate in repeat biopsies. So we cannot spoke from a gold standard, in my opinion, if we use a normal transrectal ultrasound biopsy. In our study, we evaluated the combination of transrectal ultrasound biopsy in combination with an MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy. First of all, we have to start with the so-called multi-parametric MRI. That means T2-weighted imaging, diffusion-weighted imaging, and dynamic MRI. And this is an example of a patient where we have three negative biopsies in the history, there is a clear increase in a PSA level from 3 up to 12, and the histological result was an intermediate wrist cancer. Of course, if you use a high-end scanner, you will reconstruct the tumor area very well, like in that example of a very atypical localization of the tumor based on fly-through imaging. So we need new horizons. And the new horizon is MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy. And first, we have to understand the so-called image registration technique. The easiest way to use this method is a cognitive registration. That means that you can use a workstation in your procedure room and you will analyze with the workstation the situation. If you do things like this, you have an increase of the detection rate of 29.5% uh, in contrast to 9.8% with the normal setting. Move on to the sensor-based registration. This is our technique. We have a very high cancer detection rate from 36% based from the literature, and this is much higher and significantly higher than the cognitive registration. The next step could be an organ-based registration, but so far there's a limited number uh, of studies in the literature. The computer tracks the organ itself and not only the probe, and I believe that's a good way, especially for therapeutic options. 
What are the limitations of this technique? If you analyze the prostate based on MRI, we have a clear transverse or axial oriented scan plane. And if you use ultrasound, especially in the end fire situation, we have an oblique scan plane. And that's the reason why these images match not so perfectly. One idea to overcome this limitation is to use additional techniques like contrast enhanced ultrasound. You see very clearly here the aggressive tumor, once again a high risk cancer, and also the cancer 3 plus 3, Gleason score 6, a lower aggressive cancer. The next step is to align the MRI perfectly to ultrasound. We use an angulation of 30 degree so that we have a perfect matching and of course you can use T2 weighted imaging as well as diffusion weighted imaging. What is the value of contrast enhanced ultrasound? It's very difficult to scan the prostate because you have only one up to two seconds to see the tumor contrast like in that example. We used a rival time parametric imaging to visualize this uh, inflow very well. This is the tumor area, and now the central zone shows also an enhancement. It's very difficult to separate the tumor. This is much, much easier if you have the right scan plane, and you can ca compare directly the MRI situation and the contrast-enhanced ultrasound. In that example, we have an early inflow, and it takes 25 up to 26 seconds to have a slight washout in this tumor area, which works perfect with the matching of fusion technique. The next step to understand fusion is to use the best b mode quality which is available on the market in my opinion. And you see on your right the ultrasound image looks clearer than the MRI image. That's horrible also from the guys from the MRI evaluation, so I believe that's a hard fight, but in my opinion that's the right way. So first mes message, very nice b mode quality is necessary. The next topic is power doppler, we see the tumor very well. That's an analysis after contrast, and the next step is tissue Doppler imaging to see the whole diameter of the tumour. Based on the sensor-based registration, we can reconstruct also a three-dimensional volume, and it's also a good idea to plan the puncture procedure or the focal therapy. To overcome the limitation of deformation based on the probe on your left, that's the ultrasound examination, and that's the whole gland in the MRI, and if you used tissue Doppler imaging, you will find tumor area very clearly. So that's the idea of registration, uh, of the prostate to overcome some limitations in the fusion technique. That's the setup in our procedure room. Please first have a look on your left, starting with the low magnetic field generator with the probe. This is an end fire probe, normal transrectal probe. And first I'd like to show you the attachment of the position sensor to the probe. It's an easy procedure and of course it's good for sterilization, so no problem to handling this uh, situation. Then we move on to align the scan plane with the uh, DICOM MRI data. First of all, we have to analyze the MRI tumor area and the border contour of the prostate with anatomical markers. We separate or um, set the marker also in ultrasound and then we have a perfect alignment of both modalities. Next step is to understand our procedure. That's me on your left, that's the urologist. And uh, so you can see that's a kind of brain fusion. So we can talk directly with the clinical uh, cooperation partner the situation. Uh, we can analyze the alpha contour together. We will see the MRI plane as well as the ultrasound uh, scan plane. And of course, we can talk directly. And you see here in that example, a perfect matching of the alpha contour of the prostate. That's the focal tumor area selected in the MRI scan and then in the ultrasound scan with a perfect alignment. Next step is to move on to the biopsy. Um, the whole procedure takes around about 15 minutes, so it's not very time consuming. And uh, you see once again the direct interaction. We used power Doppler after contrast, ADF after contrast. We use tissue Doppler imaging once again to see the whole diameter of the tumor. You see also a kind of cognitive reconstruction because there's a workstation in the procedure room uh, that makes you easier also for your following transrectal ultrasound biopsy. Please have a look on your right, that's our schema. We do a targeting biopsy in minimum two samples and maximum five samples. And of course, we have a combination of a normal transrectal ultrasound biopsy with 10 cores. Now the procedure will start. The patient is located on the left side. And you see directly here the procedure. That's your MRI scan, that's your needle tip, perfectly in the tumor area. 
So in my opinion, that works very nicely. That's the analysis or the specimen on the left side. No cancer was detected. That's the histological preparate after radical prostatectomy. And we have a perfect matching between ultrasound and MRI. And that's once again the specimen or probe from the tumor area done with the fusion biopsy. Sometimes we have very hard scanning conditions, like in that example of a German potato. So the meaning is this is a very big gland. How it works in big glands, it works also perfect, but it's absolutely necessary once again to have a very nice B-mode quality, otherwise you will miss these tiny lesions. Here the needle tip is coming, the rim is perfect in a central area, and we have a good success with this fusion technology in that example. Next step is to understand that we can use ultrasound and especially these high-end techniques for a scoring system. We score once again T2 and diffusion-weighted MRI based on the angulation because this is not a transverse MRI scan. Then we used ultrasound B-mode, power Doppler elastography and contrast enhanced ultrasound to have an uh, adaptive score from 0 to 15. In that ex example, 12, a clear suspicious area based on the B-mode hypervascularization in the power Doppler and a stiff tumor area based on the tissue Doppler imaging and the contrast image with an early inflow. If we do things like that, we can separate very clearly low-grade cancers from high-risk cancers. And that's absolutely important also to understand what is the next step for therapeutic options. We have a very high sensitivity from 93% and very good specificity, 83%, uh, yielding an area under the curve of 0.821. These are the results more in detail. So far, we have studied 128 patients. We have a cancer detection rate of around about 30%. And if we select the patient cohort very carefully, you will see that we pick up with the fusion biopsy, especially the high-risk cancers. And that's exactly what we want. Sometimes in an atypical localization, like in an anterior, ventral, or apical localization, like in that example, and you will understand it's very difficult to pick up such a tumor because you have to go inside the prostate four centimeters to have a good success for your biopsy. We have to talk on contrast-enhanced ultrasound too, as well as on um, superb microvascular imaging for scrotal lesions. Starting with the anatomy of the um, scrotum, I will outline this small structure, one millimeter in size, with fly-through reconstructed. This is the appendix of testis. Could be very painful because there's also a, a torsion as a disease. It's very interesting, very painful, and it's a small spermatocele. This is no problem for the patient, so some normal looking things. What is the background of contrast-enhanced ultrasound for the scrotum? We know ultrasound is the imaging modality of choice for examination of the scrotum, and sometimes we have the problem of misinterpretation, which can be result in unnecessary orchiectomy. And the only thing which we have to do is the differentiation between hypovascular lesions, probably benign, uh, malignant, and avascular lesions should be benign. So we have to talk on the examination of the scrotum and four patterns of enhancement or disease, starting with torsion, trauma, tumors, and inflammation. Torsion. Torsion of the spermatic cord is, in my opinion, only a problem in small children with small testes. They're, it could be very difficult to see the vascular structure in these cases, and so therefore this is a good idea to use contrast-enhanced ultrasound. And you see here a complete absence of vascularity, and of course this is an orchiectomy in, in this situation, and you have to talk with the parents very carefully. A good idea to use contrast-enhanced ultrasound for the scrotum is um, after trauma to see a segmental infarction um, to separate hematoma or tumor and to see the amount of viable testes. Like in that example where we see contrast-enhanced ultrasound, it's absolutely superior in correlation to power Doppler. We see a lot of vessels, but we see clear here the amount of viable testes. It's very nice visible with this technique. This is a very severe case. This is an SMI case where we see only one vessel, and this corresponds very well with contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Next topic is tumor. Uh, we talk on tumors with a diameter less than 1.5 centimeter because they may not show flow on color-coded duplex ultrasound, like in the two examples. This is a hematoma case, and this is a tumor case. Both football players, both with a painful testis, and it looks quite similar. 
it's much, much easier to separate the tumor area based on contrast-enhanced ultrasound. And there's also an additional information because we see vessels here in the capsula. And in my opinion, in that case, there's a disruption of the capsula. That's SMI, which shows us also these tiny vessels very well. Elastography, once again, to see the disruption of the capsula. And important information also for the surgeon or urologist. And last but not least, the reconstruction with the fly-through mode, where we see perfect here the destruction of the surface of the testis. In testicular cancer, we have to separate the germ cell tumors in 95% of the cases and the so-called sex cord gonadal stroma tumors, rare cases. So I have to show you some rare cases. This is a hypovascular lesion. This is a lytic cell tumor. Interesting case, but the topic is more focused on a Sertoli cell tumor, small tumor, no vascularity in the central portion of the tumor, and if we use contrast-enhanced ultrasound, it's very clearly to see the vascularity nature of this tumor. Here's the tumor area, there's the vascularity, looks like a rim-like enhancement, and of course you can use uh, techniques like microflow imaging to demonstrate the vascularity very well, like in that example. This is a very uh, exciting case, a very small germ cell tumor in a situation of mycolytiasis. First, I'd like to demonstrate the microlithiasis based on micropure imaging. That's the focal tumor area. Move on to SMI tumor area. And look at this. This is the vascularity of this small tumor area. Here are the atypical vascularity nature of the tumor is located in this example. And so therefore, we have to double check with contrast. We see the same thing. And of course, we can analyze this tumor also very carefully based on elastography. Of course, this is a big tumor, but it demonstrates once again very nicely the value of SMI. We see first, of course, vessels based on power Doppler, a lot of more typical feeding vessels based on SMI. That's an image after contrast application, a so-called late phase image, and that's the contrast enhanced ultrasound. Of course, you have a dynamic value if you use contrast enhanced ultrasound. Last pattern of enhancement, inflammation. There's a good idea to use contrast-enhanced ultrasound to see this typical rim-like enhancement, like in that small abscess of the epididymis. This is a more chronic one, where we see only in the SMI vascularity nature here, once again, of this inflammation. It's not possible to detect these tiny vessels based on power Doppler evaluation, so that's a very interesting case. And I'd like to show you, once again, an abscess and I'd never see before vessels like that without any kind of contrast, four millimeter abscess, and look at this. It's absolutely fascinating and beautiful to use this new technology. And you see we have a higher resolution than contrast ultrasound, but of course there's an additional value to see this typical rim-like enhancement, this early enhancement in contrast to the normal testis tissue. Very well examination, in my opinion, together. So we can say the recommended use and indications for contrast-enhanced ultrasound for the scrotum. So far, focal testicular, focal testicular lesions, level B2B, um, the discrimination of non-viable tissue after trauma, it's an important point in my opinion. The segmental infarction is the same story, and I have demonstrated some nice cases of abscesses. A short outlook. You know this example, color-coded duplex ultrasound, we will reduce clutter, but we don't select the microvascular floor if we use this normal technique. An adaptive background subtraction based on SMI helps you to increase uh, the visual visibility of microvascular flow pattern, like in a reactive enlarged lymph node, like in that small abscess, or like in that kidney graft recipient once again. This is an image, very fascinating to see all these vascular structures here in a kidney graft, once again in a late phase after contrast application. And of course, like the talk from Professor Hatter, we see some points in the superficial localization that's a cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, a subcutaneous evaluation based on this new technology. So that's my last question to you. Where does the X come from? It's very easy to understand the X come from the purple rabbit. And in my opinion, this purple rabbit from my daughter, four years old, looks nicer than my purple rabbit. And I have to say thank you so much for your kind attention. <laughs>